OpenArt has the new Flux1 model called Context, which isn't just for generating images, it's also a very powerful image editing tool. You can use it to generate a brand new image from a text prompt, but you can also give it an image that you already have and tell it to put the subject in different clothing or a different location or doing a different action or change the background or even change text in the image. And it does remarkably well at maintaining the consistency of your subject or character while making the changes that you wanted to incorporate. We're going to check it out. My name is Bob and this video is sponsored by OpenArt. I've been working with them for a while now and I'm happy to keep sharing the cool tools that they have for creators. There's a couple of places we can use the context model in OpenArt, one of them is on the Create page. To get to that, from the OpenArt homepage, we'll just come over on the left and click Create Image. We want to make sure that this model or character is set to Flux Context. If it's not, just click anywhere on it on the Switch button. OpenArt has lots of models available, we just want to select the one that says Flux Context. Now like I said, you can generate images with this model, just type in a text prompt. We'll just say a cat on a windowsill, something really simple. We're going to scroll down and skip over image guidance for right now. We can change the output size. If we want something different than a square, which is the default, we can pick a different aspect ratio. We're going to skip over the advanced settings. Below that, you can set the number of images. That's how many variations it will create when you click the Create button. And we're going to click that Create button. And in a few seconds, we have two variations of a cat in a windowsill. If we scroll back up in the prompt box, you have this little toggle for Auto Enhance, which is currently set to Off. We can click that on, not change anything in our prompt, come back down here and click create and we got two very different images. Now if you want to see how it enhanced your prompt just click on one of these images then over on the right you'll see the prompt we typed a cat on a windowsill and right below it you'll see enhanced prompt. This is what the AI turned our prompt into in order to generate this image. Now if you want to see what the enhanced prompt looks like before you click the create button you can hit this little arrow drop down next to auto enhance come down here and click quick enhance and it'll take our cat on a windowsill prompt and and it will enhance it right here in the prompt box before we hit the create button so we can make any changes. So if there's things in here we really like but things we don't we can adjust as necessary before we click create. I'm going to clear out this prompt because generating images with the flux context model is all fine but what we really want to get into is changing and editing images with this model. So to make changes to an existing image we're going to come here under image guidance. If you don't see it just look for this little arrow and click it to expand the image guidance window. We can either drag our image in here or we can click this button and either choose to upload or if we click history we can go through our previous generations in open art and all our saved albums. I'm just going to drag in an image of me from my computer and then up in the prompt box I'm going to say the man is working on a laptop in a futuristic high-tech office. I'm going to turn the auto enhance off for now. Let's see how it does with just this simple prompt. Then we'll come down here and click create and we've got two variations. Let's go ahead and zoom this in a little bit. Both of these images follow the prompt they put me in a laptop in a futuristic office and notice how consistent our character stayed from the original image I provided to the new images it generated. It even kept me in this blue shirt but I can change that too just by telling it in the prompt. So let's try the man is wearing a red hoodie and building a robot in a cluttered but creative workshop. We'll click create and six seconds later there I am building a robot. Two variations here both of them I'm building a robot wearing a red hoodie in this workshop. The character is very consistent in both of these variations, although I may be missing a finger on this hand in the image on the right, but maybe I had an accident in the workshop here. Now let's try something really different from our original image. Instead of having me sitting at a desk or sitting at a workbench, we're going to have me dressed as a superhero soaring through a futuristic cityscape. And we've got Super Bob here to save the day. Now we're going to try the man is hiking through a snowy mountain pass with a breathtaking vista in the background. And for each of these prompts so far, within the prompt, I've just referred to this reference image by saying the man. That's letting the AI know what I'm talking about from this reference image and what it should be looking for and incorporating into the new image. In this case it seems to be working just fine. If I was having any problems with that I might want to add some detail to this like say the man with glasses or the man with glasses and short brown hair or the man in the blue shirt especially if the reference image was more complex. Since this seems to be working I'm just going to leave it as the man is hiking and we'll click create. I think that fulfilled our request. It's the man that looks like me. I appear to be hiking through a snowy mountain pass with a breathtaking vista in the background in both of these variations. And in all 
of these that we've done so far, it's done an excellent job of keeping me looking like me. Now, OpenArt has some other features for consistent characters, like their characters tool, their model fine tuning, and I don't think this flux context tool eliminates the usefulness of those tools at all. They each have their own features and strengths, but I think this tool can be really handy for achieving consistent characters. It's faster, easier, and cheaper in the situations where you don't need all the other features and bells and whistles of training a character or using a fine-tuned model. Now, so far we've been using this one original image and generating these other images based on that original. If I wanted to make changes, like I've got my hiking scene here, if I want to make a change to this, I'm going to say put him in a red parka. I could either on this preview page come over here to use image, drop that down, and then click Omni Reference, and that'll put this image now over in the Omni Reference section. Or if I decided, no, I wanted the other hiking image, I could delete this from the Omni Reference, click the button that says click or drag to upload, go to history, and click this second image, the one on the right, and say confirm. And now I'd be making a change to this image. But there's another way we can work with the context model in OpenArt. If we come over here on the left side and click on chat, that brings us into the chat to edit area, where we'll be able to keep on applying changes on top of existing changes in a more fluid workflow. And on this page, over on the right is the image that I'll be working with. Let's go ahead and get one in here. We can either click to upload, we can select something from our open art history, or drag something in from your computer. This is my new product, I probably shouldn't be sharing this yet, but it's Bob's dehydrated water. You just add water to reactivate it. It's so much lighter to carry. I think it's going to be really big. Anyway, we have our image here in the preview. Below you have the image rail. That'll make more sense as we start to make changes and do things. Up on the top you have the model. Flux context is what is selected. That's the one we want to use. I have another video that goes through chat to edit with Gemini and the GP T models, but so far I'm liking Flux Context way better. Down here at the bottom left, we have our message box or prompt box, whatever you want to call it, and this is where we tell it what we want to change. So I said place the bottle labeled Bob's Dehydrated Water in the hand of a smiling woman in a casual outfit standing in front of a muted gray studio backdrop like a product advertisement. Make sure the label is clearly visible. Then we can just hit enter on the keyboard or click the send message button, and there we have a smiling woman in a casual outfit presenting the bottle of water. Now this bottle seems disproportionately large here, and that's an issue that I've encountered, and I haven't quite figured out the trick for getting it to understand how big or small things should be in proportion to whatever it's adding or creating. I've tried different ways of describing the size and proportion in the prompt, but I haven't figured out the secret yet if there is one. But let's see if we can get it to reduce the size of the bottle from here. Now down here on my image rail, this was our original image, the bottle of water by itself. Once it generated this second image, image of the woman holding the bottle, you'll notice that's the image that's selected. So any change that I make now will be based on this image of the woman holding the bottle, not the original image. And that's what makes the chat to edit section a little bit more fluid if we want to iterate through these prompts and changes versus the create page where we have to do a little bit of clicking to get it to change the reference image. But here in chat to edit it automatically selects the last image that was created. So let's just come over here into the prompt. We'll just try the bottle labeled Bob's dehydrated water is small, about the size of a 12 ounce can of soda. Not a whole lot of difference in the size there, but we certainly can appreciate that we started out with this image, with this label, and when it put it in the woman's hands, that image is what we started with. It not only maintained the consistency of the label in the water, but it also maintained our character. Let's see what it does with another iteration. This time we're going to have her holding the bottle in a bright modern kitchen and we've told it to keep the text and typography on the label clear and unchanged. So the water bottle there looks the same from the original that we uploaded, and the lady holding the bottle doesn't seem to have changed from the last two images where she appeared. Now it's done a great job of maintaining our text from our original supplied image all the way through these different iterations, but let's see how it can do changing some text, and let's try with a new image. I'm going to drag in this poster, and I'm going to say change the text Synthwave City to Accelerator Band, keeping the same font and style. And it did exactly what I asked it to do. Comparing it to the original, it kept the same style and text, and just changed that Synthwave City to Accelerator Band, exactly like I asked. Now I'm going to try and change the text color, this blue teal text, to a bright neon lime green color, and I'll tell it to keep the pink text the same pink color. And there we go, it kept my pink text pink, and it changed everything that was teal to this bright neon lime green. And it kept all my text intact. Now if I decided that I wanted to make that text color change to this 
Synthwave City poster rather than after it had been changed to Accelerator Band, I can select and work with any of these other images in the image rail. I can just come over to the Synthwave City, click it. It's got the blue outline, so that's the one I'll be working with. I'll say the same thing about change the color of the teal blue text to bright neon and leave the pink pink. We'll hit enter. And now it's made the change based on my original image because that's what I had selected when I sent the request. Being able to select the image you want to work with from the image rail is really handy if something gets off track because then you can always go back one or two iterations and start from that point. Let's bring in a new image. I'll just drop it down here. And what I want to do here is change this fresh pastries today sign to say try our new cold brew. So in the prompt, I'm gonna say, change the chalkboard text to try our new cold brew in the same handwritten style. Since there's text in two places on this image, I wanted to be careful to specify that it's on the chalkboard sign and not just say, change the text, it might've changed the sign above the store. Another way I could have specified that would have been to say, change the text, fresh pastries today, to try our new cold brew. Or I could have told it both, change the chalkboard text that says this to that whatever it takes to help the AI understand what I'm referring to. We can also change objects and textures and all that stuff. So let's try replace the chalkboard signs wooden frame with a black metal frame, keeping the overall placement and perspective. Now let's try adjust the lighting to golden hour, casting warm highlights on the facade. Now let's try adding a person into this scene. I'm gonna say a friendly old shopkeeper is standing in front of the blue door wearing a striped apron. And now we've got our friendly old shopkeeper in his striped apron, but it's maintained the consistency in the rest of the image. Now what if we decide we, we like having a shopkeeper here, but we're not crazy about this lighting? Well, we can go back and work with the image before we added the shopkeeper. That one has the golden hour lighting. We can go back one more to when we change that sign to the black frame, or we can go back to the brown wood frame, or all the way back to our original image. With that original image, Selected. We add the prompt about the friendly old shopkeeper standing in front of the door. We'll send that. And this time the AI got confused. So we're going to go back and select that original image. And after I say a friendly old shopkeeper standing in front of the blue door wearing a striped apron, I'm going to say keep all existing elements in the image. Just add the shopkeeper to the composition. Let's try that much better. We can also use Flux Context to restyle the image. In the prompt, I'm just going to say, make this a watercolor painting, but maybe I want to try it as an oil painting. So rather than going from the watercolor to oil, I'll go back and select the original image. I'll say, make this an oil painting. And there we have it in the style of an oil painting. I want to try one more. So let's go back and select that original image. And this time I'll word it a little differently and say, transform to 2D cartoon animation style. And I'd say that looks like a cartoon. And if I want to keep on making can changes from here, like the man is wearing a red apron and a blue hat. There we go. Now maybe I want to put this guy somewhere else. Maybe we can get him inside. I'll say the man in the blue hat and the red apron, that's how I'm referencing to the AI what it is I'm talking about in this image, is standing inside a pastry shop. And now we've just moved our character inside while maintaining the consistency of that character. And yes, we have some nonsensical text up here. What could we do to change that? Well, let's try change the text, and I did my best to try and type out what letters it looked like those were, to the sweet spot. And there we go, all fixed up. Now, when you're changing text, if I try to take what was there, these two words here, and try to replace that with a paragraph, it might have had a problem. So when replacing text, it seems to be a good idea to try and stick with a similar length of text and, you know, not trying to put a paragraph where a couple of words were. There's a lot of ways you can use Flux Context, and OpenArt has put together a guidebook on some of the use cases and some of the tips and tricks on how to get the best results. When you're on the Create page in OpenArt with the Flux Context model selected, you'll find a link to that guidebook right under the Omni Reference heading. And maybe if I read that guidebook a little more closely, I'd figure out the solution to my oversized water bottle. So I'm off to do that so that I can get that winning product to market. Thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. And I hope you'll come back and see me in another video.